Hey, crazies. <laughs> <laughs> the transporter problem. It's been a topic of philosophical debate for as long as the tech has existed in sci-fi. I recently had the opportunity to ask other YouTubers whether or not they'd use one. I would probably use it. Only when I was like 90. I would say no. I would not be the first to use it. I think I'd use it. No. 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 <laughs> So my answer is probably no. So my answer is no. Oh, absolutely. Of course, they had a lot more to say about it than just yes or no. This device raises questions about what it means to exist. What makes you, you? Essentially, what we're talking about here is teleportation, but that can work differently depending on the fiction. Nightcrawler from Marvel shunts himself into an alternate realm. In the video game Portal, an actual hole is opened that connects two points in space. Other stories use dimensional folds or wormholes. Now, all of those options would be philosophically more appealing. Unfortunately, Star Trek's Destroyer, I, I mean Transporter, is the most realistic. According to the Star Trek technical manual I got for my 10th birthday, you step into this device's chamber, it scans your entire body, clothes, and items, it then takes you apart at the particle level, briefly stores you in a buffer to run calculations, and uses that scan to put you back together somewhere else. Can we do that? No. Well, then how is that at all realistic? I, I didn't say it was realistic. I said it was the most realistic of the fictions. For example, wormholes require unobserved things like exotic matter. That's matter with properties that don't make sense, like negative mass or something. The Star Trek transporter only uses physics we've already confirmed by observation. Quantum mechanics. As far as quantum is concerned, teleportation should be possible. We may not have done it with objects or people yet, but we have done it with individual particles. So yeah, we certainly don't have teleportation yet. I would be terrified. Uh, and maybe I might if, if, you know, hundreds of thousands of people had tried it out beforehand and everything was fine. But my fear is that you would have like, like a, a, there would be an error with the copy. Like it might be subtle. Like you lose a tiny little bit every time, I don't know. Like, and I feel like if, if we were thinking about what that would look like in our world, if that was brought in, there'd be so much like, like short term versus long term effects that no one would know about until people had used it for a really long time. But do you want right. to be the guinea pig for the long term effects, even if there's no short term effects mm -hmm. that are, are like immediately apparent? Once we do finally figure it out, there might be some potential problems. In Star Trek alone, there have been several plots centered around transporter accidents. So I think we can all understand a little hesitation. Early on, it'll probably only be approved for cargo, not people or animals. We'll need to work out a few kinks first. Well, I feel like all of these these kinks will be worked out by this point, right? If it's a time-tested thing, we would have studies on like who is the original or have some at least some idea. So I would feel if it's time-tested and it's been used a lot, I'd use it for sure. It's a, okay. it's a convenience at that point. Assuming we work out all those kinks, it should be possible to safely teleport a person. Not easy, but possible. Flying isn't easy, it's never been easy, but statistically it's safe. I imagine teleportation would get there too, eventually. Get in the beam, losers. We're going shopping. What about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? Doesn't prevent teleportation. Wh what? Allow me to explain. In, in Star Trek, they explain this problem away with something called a Heisenberg compensator. But you don't actually need to explain it away like that. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle is all about direct measurements of particle properties. For example, the more definite you measure position, the less definite momentum becomes. The reverse is also true. The more definite the momentum, the less definite the position. That pattern pops up all over quantum mechanics with many pairs of properties. But teleporters won't necessarily be taking direct measurements. If a particle is in a superposition of classical states like this, that's perfectly fine. It can stay that way. In fact, we would prefer it to stay that way. The superposition is probably there for a reason. Collapsing it could be bad. It could cause some of those accidents we've already said we've hypothetically worked out. We don't need the superposition to collapse. We just need to know what the superposition is so we can reproduce it somewhere else. I, you know, do you know how many nights I have not been able to sleep because I'm thinking about the transporter problem? It's, it's a ship of Theseus problem, right? Because mm -hmm. like if, if, you, if you get 
if all your atoms and molecules are taken apart and put together somewhere else, it's a different you. Any conversation about teleportation inevitably arrives at the ship of Theseus. You might have heard of this before, but I'm gonna run through it real quick anyway. In Greek mythology, there was this guy named Theseus. Over time, his wooden ship would decay and pieces of it would be replaced. Eventually, every plank of wood and every oar was replaced. Is it still Theseus's ship? What if we took all the rotten pieces and assembled a ship out of them? Is that Theseus' ship or is the new one his ship? What makes a thing a thing? If your particles are disassembled and then new particles are used to like reassemble you somewhere else, is that still you? Well, that depends on what you consider to be you. If you use a transporter, are you still the same person? That's kind of what we're getting at here. Right. And I think that, you know, the resulting person who is transported believes that they're the same person and we have to accept that. I remember talking to my buddy in college about this and he considered it's someone who has all your memories and experiences and thinks they're you, but they're still not you. And I can see that perspective a lot. The new guy would not be me, he'd be like a clone. Thankfully, quantum mechanics forbids cloning. The only allowed operations are ones where the original is destroyed. Quantum teleportation is possible. Quantum cloning is not. At least not perfect quantum cloning. They've been able to clone qubits with 83% fidelity, but that's a far cry from 100%. And that's a single qubit in a quantum computer, not a whole person. The point is, if we did manage to successfully make quantum clones of people, these clones would be at least a little different from the original. They'd be their own unique entities. But this still doesn't address the continuity issue. What are you? What am I? I feel like I use one every day. It's called sleep. Like I go to sleep and then I wake up and I'm in a slightly different place in my bed and I don't remember how I got there. Was my selfhood interrupted? Do you disappear, like when you sleep, when you, when you wake up, are you the same person as, as when to bed? You certainly have the feeling of continuity, but is it actual continuity? And then maybe there's the question of, does it matter? I can assure you, sleep is still existence. I've experienced non-existence and it's terrifying. Of course, I was still alive while unconscious. And I think this is the core of the transporter problem. Many of us like to think we exist independent of our bodies, that we have a soul or something like it. If we can be alive, but not conscious, then it should be possible to be conscious, but not alive, right? If we're disassembled at the particle level and put back together, does that soul go with us? Or is it left behind and a new soul is made in the new body? I honestly don't know. A soul is immeasurable. If it's immeasurable, then it's not scientific. The only way to proceed scientifically is to assume that anything immeasurable isn't important. To be clear, I'm not saying that souls don't exist. Again, I, I don't know that. I'm just saying they're not important for the universe to function. Given that assumption, what can we say about existence? I'm certainly a collection of atoms that thinks I'm me. And I think anyone I've ever met would say the same thing about themselves. Like, you know, the question is, like, does your consciousness, like, translate to the new body? Like, right. what is your consciousness? Like, I, I have a very materialist, materialistic view of all this. Like, yes. I think consciousness is just an emergent property of everything going on in, amongst your neurons. And the person on the other end has no idea because all their memories and stuff has been, like, reshaped exactly the way you... So to that person, it's just like this continuity of consciousness. Uh, nobody actually knows where consciousness comes from. Some hypotheses say it emerges from the complex electrical patterns in the brain. Others say quantum mechanics is what makes consciousness possible. But either way, it comes down to the behavior of our microscopic parts. If a machine existed that could disassemble those parts and then put them back together in exactly the same fashion, then scientifically speaking, that new person is you in every way that matters to the universe. Plus the cells in our bodies replace their own atoms all the time. It's not like we're the same collection of atoms we were even a year ago. If I were to shine a laser on the wall, you'd see a dot. But if I move that dot around the wall, it's the same dot, right? Well, we certainly talk about it like it's the same dot. But the dot in every single frame of this video is made of different photons. Yet we still consider it to be the same dot. The Star Trek transporter does the same thing. It just does it suddenly, which breaks the illusion of continuity. 
and there would be a new Michael somewhere else who, who felt continuous with me, but that I would be gone. Doesn't that continuity matter though? I thought it did, but apparently not to everyone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah? To be able to travel anywhere in the world. Okay. Yeah. Universe. Universe. Universe, yeah. If enough people used it and there were no issues, I'd use it. I think I, mm, I think I'd use it. Okay. If it was long term, that, that long term, maybe. Maybe. I would probably use it, but I feel queasy about that in my soul. So would I personally use a Star Trek transporter? I mean, I usually say no, but I think if I was in a situation where it was life-threatening not to use it, I'd probably do it. Yeah, I'm gonna get, go find a dark corner now and yeah. work my way through this. Huge thank you to everyone who let me interview them. You can find links to their channels down in the doobly-doo. If you haven't already, you should go check them out. Anyway, crazies, would you use a Star Trek transporter? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. A special thanks goes out to my generous Patreon patrons and YouTube members like James Younger DDS, our new asylum counselor. Thanks, Dr. Younger. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. The featured comment comes from Jersamash, who gave some detail about injection molding. Apparently, my chips and cracks are remnants of the manufacturing process, not actually damage. I guess that's what I get for having almost zero engineering experience. Anyway, thanks for watching.